This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo the General Overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for your love towards us. The Bible said, Behold, what manner of love the Father has loved us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, because nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Father, this morning we celebrate your love, Lord. We ask, Lord, that by your spirit, you will help us, Father, to understand, Lord, your love, how much you love us, Father. Help us, O oh Lord. Grant us the revelation of the love of Christ this morning, Holy Spirit. Lord, we receive your word with an open heart. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can I hear you say amen? amen. amen. Glory be to amen. Jesus. Now, this morning I want to introduce you to the greatest law, the strongest law, the purest law, the highest law that is ever. And of course, that is the love of Christ. So this morning, briefly, I'm speaking on what I call knowing the love of Christ. Let someone say the love of Christ. The love of Christ. Now someone said this, and I totally agree with him. He said, uh, one of the world that is uh, mostly abused in our generation is love, is love, all right? Most times, people say it often, but they don't even know what they are saying. You understand? You know, there are people here, under the sound of my voice, that, now, people that have said, I love you before, now, you don't, you don't want to remember what they did to you. You understand what I'm talking about? You, you wish you never believed them. You wish you never opened up your heart to accept whatever love they are, they are proclaiming to you. You understand? Because they said, I love you, and yet they broke your heart. They said, I love you, yet they betray you. You understand what I'm talking about? They say, yet I love you, and when you needed them most, they walk out on you. They abandon you. They forsake you. They left you. You understand what I'm talking about? So in our words, the word love has been greatly abused. There are many that don't even... Feel any excitement when somebody say, I love you. you. You understand what I'm talking about? They don't take it to be anything anymore. It doesn't mean anything to them anymore. Why? Because of their past terrible and ugly experiences. But this morning, I want to tell you, there is a love that, that, is, that is far greater you know, than whatever you have experienced before. And that is the love of Christ. That is the love of Christ. Now listen to me. If there's any love that you need to know, that you need to understand, that you need to believe, that you need to open up your heart to receive and to respond to, it is the love of Christ. Let's say the love of, the love of Christ. So that's what I'm talking about this morning. Knowing the love of Christ. Now listen to me. The reason why many Christians are unstable. The reason why many Christians they are hot today, they are cold tomorrow, and they are lukewarm. The reason why many Christians are always struggling with depression, with sadness, with discouragement. The reason why many believers are even fighting the thought of suicide. Do you know why? Because they are not grounded in the love of Christ. Because they do not know how much God loves them. That's why many are fearful. All right. When they go out in the morning, they are afraid. They are, they are thinking something evil will happen to them. That's the reason why many are afraid when their children go out. They can't sleep. They can't rest. You understand? Because they do not know how much God loves them and loves their kids. How much God cares for them. Now, if you know how much God loves you, if you really understand the love of Christ, now listen to me, your mind will be at rest. You will have peace, no matter the situation that you find yourself, no matter the challenge that rises against you, no matter what comes against you, you will be bold, you'll be courageous, you'll be strong. Do you know why? Because God, that holds the universe, loves you, is on your side, is for you. Yeah. But because many do not really know or understand the love of Christ, we are afraid like the unbelievers. We are troubled like the unbeliever. We are worried like the unbeliever. We are depressed like the unbeliever. We are sad like the unbeliever. We are discouraged. That ought not to be. That ought not to be. The understanding of the love of Christ, now listen to me, it will give you stability. It will strengthen you. 
It, it will impact boldness and courage to you. You'll be able to say that in all things, I am more than conqueror. You'll be able to say, God, be for me. Just as we read earlier, who can be against me? And that's why it's so important for you to understand the love of Christ. The love of Christ. And that's what I'm going to be talking about briefly. I want you to open your heart today to receive the love that Christ has for you. To believe that love and to respond also to that love. Hallelujah. Now quickly, let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. The book of Ephesians chapter 3. And we look at it 14 to 21. Now Paul was in prison in Rome when he wrote this Ephesians chapter 3. And he was expressing his greater desire and prayer for the saint at Ephesus. So what is Paul's greatest desire? What is Paul's greatest prayer for the church at Ephesus? The book of Ephesians chapter 3, I read from verse 14. For this reason, I bow on my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and at his name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with mine through his spirit in the inner man. Now this was Paul praying for the church of Ephesus. Now look at verse 17 now. Now that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Let us say Christ is dwelling in my heart. Do you believe that? Now, when you receive Jesus, when you confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior, Christ comes to dwell in your heart. In your heart. Hallelujah. Now, look at what it says, verse 17. This is for prayer. This is for desire for Christians. Now, it said that you be rooted and grounded in law. Let's not say be rooted and grounded in law. Now, what he's talking about that, he said, my prayer, my desire is that you be established in the love of Christ that nothing will move you you'll be settled you'll be rooted you'll be grounded in the love of Christ now look at verse 18 now that you may be able to comprehend that is to understand with all the say what is the width and length and depth and height it's talking about the love of Christ that the love of Christ is multidimensional it's so wide, it says, <laughs> wider than anything you can Im- imagine. It's so long, longer than anything you can imagine. It's so deep, deeper than anything you have ever known. The love of Christ is so high, higher than anything you could ever dream of. Now, Paul said, I wish that you be rooted and grand in the love of Christ. I wish that you be able to understand with all the same the love of Christ. Now, look at what he said, verse 19 now. Huh? And I'm going to stop there for now. He said, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Is that not a bit contradictory? He said that you may know something, but he said it surpasses knowledge. So how do you know something that is surpasses knowledge? We're going to get there. And he said, when you know the love of Christ, he said then you, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So the result of Knowing the love of Christ, of being rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, that you'll be filled with all the fullness of God. So if you want to be filled with all the fullness of God, then you need to seek to know the love of Christ, the love that God has towards you. Alright, so let's look at that word, to know the love of Christ. Look at that verse 19 very well. Paul prayed, Paul expressed his eyes, said, I want you guys to know the love of Christ. He said, but there's a challenge. That love of Christ surpasses, it transcends knowledge. So what kind of knowing is Paul talking about? How can I know something that surpasses knowledge? Now what Paul is saying that look, you can't get that in the college, in the university. Are you listening to me? Now, knowing the love of Christ is something that is bigger than the natural knowledge. Nobody can transmit that. Your lecturer, your professor cannot transmit, cannot impart that knowledge to you. It's a spiritual knowledge. And you listen to what I'm talking about. So it is, it is greater than a mental ascent. Alright? Oh, God loves you. Oh yes, I know God loves you. Now listen to me. It is deeper than that. Yeah. <laughs> it is not something you know with your mind alone. It's not something you know with your head alone. And you listen to me. Your heart must be able to know it. Man. So he's talking about heart knowledge, not mind knowledge. So he said to know the love of Christ. Now I wanted to look, look, look at that word know in Greek. The, the meaning of that word 
The Greek meaning of the word to know is called ginosko. Now that's a Greek meaning. The Greek word for the word know. And look at what it means. It means to learn to know. So you need to learn to know how much God loves you. <laughs> he said it means to come to know. You understand? So it's not something that you just know. You've got to come to know it. You've got to learn to know it. It means to get a knowledge, to perceive. Now I love this. It means to understand, to understand. And you know something? It means to become acquainted with it. It means to be aware. So when Paul said, I want you to know the love of Christ. He said, guys, no matter your situation, no matter your circumstances, I want you to be aware always of the love for you. I want you to be aware of it. I want you to perceive it. Now, do you know something? It also means it's a Jewish idiom uh, uh, for sexual intercourse between a man and a woman. So when Paul is saying, I want you to know the love of Christ, he's talking about a kind of intimacy between a man and a woman. As a matter of fact, the Jewish, they use it. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Hey, Dan, knew Eve his wife, and then he conceived and bought Kate, and he said, Behold, I've got a man from God. So that is the kind of the knowledge of the love of Christ that we're supposed to have. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That you need to know it with your hearts. You need to understand it. You need to perceive it that God really loves you. That Christ loves you. Are you with me this morning? Hallelujah. I said, are you with me this morning? All right. So we want to know the love of Christ. Knowing the love of Christ. Now, what does it mean to know the love of Christ? What does that really mean? To know the love of Christ. I want to read verse 19, the same Ephesians 3, verse 19. I'll read it from New Living Translation and from Amplified Bible so that we can get a good grasp of what Paul is saying. Look at verse 19 now. I'm reading from New Living Translation. Paul is praying, he said, may you experience. So another word for to know is to experience. Let's answer to experience. Yeah, yeah. All right, now listen to this. Now, maybe you're uh, eating honey now, all right? Okay, and somebody say, oh, how does honey taste? How do you describe to someone that has never eaten honey before how honey tastes? <laughs> how many of us can try to describe now, you cannot describe how it is. So what do you do? You tell the person, why not have a taste of it? So there are some things in life, now listen to me, that you cannot describe for someone, they need to experience it themselves. Yeah. I cannot adequately tell you how much Christ loves you. Now listen to me, you need to do what? To experience it. To experience it. You need to do what to say. That's what Paul is saying. So when he said to know the love of Christ, we surpass his knowledge. He said that you may experience the love of Christ in your daily life. So Paul desire for all, and listen to me, that is my desire for you also, that in your daily life, are you listening to me, that you begin to experience the love of God practically. Not just to say, I know God loves me, no, but that you begin to experience it. Amen. You begin to feel it, you begin to experience it, you begin to enjoy it, you begin to taste it, the love of Christ. So what I'm talking about is not just for you to just agree with me mentally that Christ loves you. No, I want to teach you how you begin to experience the love that Christ has for you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now I said then... You will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that come from God. Now, I'm reading the same Ephesians 3, 19 from Amplified Version. I just wanted to understand what this verse is talking about. All right, now look at what it said now. That you may really come to know practically through experience for yourself. So, to know the love of Christ, to practically through experience for yourself, understand the love of Christ. He said, the love of Christ, which first surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being unto the fullness God that may have the richest measure of the divine presence. So he said, when you know the love of Christ, when you begin to explain the love of Christ, the outcome will be that you will be filled with the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body only filled and flooded with God himself. 
The reason why many of us at times feel as if God has forsaken us is because we do not know how much he loves us. <laughs> When you know how much God really loves you, Paul says, the scriptures say, that your whole body will be filled and flooded with God, with the awesome presence of God. So, what does it mean when we talk about the love of Christ? What does it mean when we talk about knowing the love of Christ? I'm just helping you with five things and I'm trying to see how that could help you to begin to come to terms with the love that Christ has for you. Number one, listen to this. Knowing the love of Christ implies that you know that Christ loves you deliberately. That Christ loves you voluntarily, willingly. How many of you have tried to make people love you before? You know, uh, most time teenagers, you know, uh, they, they have that problem. You know, when they have crush on somebody, they, they want to do everything to get the person to love them. And most time it doesn't work. There's nothing as frustrating as trying to get somebody to love you who doesn't love you. Uh, do you understand? But when somebody on his own, voluntarily, out of his own volition, just love you, now that is sweet. That's love. That, you will enjoy that. That's pleasant. Are you listening to me? Now, I want to let you know that Christ was never forced to love you. He chose to love you. Yeah. Do you understand? Now, that's the first thing I want you to know about the love of Christ. It's a voluntary love. So, Christ chose to love you. He chose to love me willingly, deliberately. So, you don't need to impress him to love you. He has chosen before he made you. Are you listening to me? Before he created you, he chose to love you. So, he created you as an object of his love. He created you to be what? A recipient of his love. Yeah. You need to understand that. That God has chosen to love you. Are you listening to me? And do you know what? He has made up his mind to love you. It is too late. The devil can't change his mind. Are you listening to me? Your mistake cannot change God's mind. God's mind is already made up to love you. Now look at what Jesus said. In the book of John 10, 17, 18, Jesus said, Therefore, my father loves me because I laid down my life. Take note of that word. I laid down my life that I may take it again. Verse 18. No one take it from me. But I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. This command I received from my father. First John 3.16. The Bible said by this we know law. Because he laid down his life for all. Now listen to me God's people. As Jesus was on, on the cross. It wasn't the nail that kept him on the cross. It was the love that he had for all. He said I laid down the life of myself. He said listen to me. I have the power. I can choose to jump off the cross. I can choose not to die again. <laughs> He said, but because of the law that I have, I laid down my life. The Bible said, this is how we know law, because Christ laid down his life. And do you know what? His father did not force him. Nobody forced Christ to die for you. Are you listening to what I'm And his death is the greatest expression, demonstration of his love towards us. He died for our sin. And he said, guys, do you know what? I did it voluntarily. Voluntary. Yeah. Do you know what that means? That God loves you and he will continue to love you voluntarily. Mm -hmm. Willing. Oh, but how can God love me? That's too late. He has chosen to love you. He has chosen to love you. Let's all say, Christ loved me. Christ loved me. Deliberately. Deliberately. Voluntarily. Voluntarily. Willingly. Willingly. Number two. Now, when we talk about the love of Christ, now it implies, now listen to me, that you are loved unconditionally by Christ. So Christ's love for you is what? He's without any criteria. He's without any condition. There is no condition to me for Christ to love you. You need to understand that. There's no criteria. He has chosen to love you. The Bible says, now look at what the Bible says. You know, uh, Romans chapter 5 says, but God demonstrates his love towards us in the why we were still sinners. Let's not say why we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Now, he didn't wait for us to be godly. Are you listening to me? He didn't wait for us to say, I, I, I love God. I love Jesus. I'll be coming to church. No, he loved you even before yes. you turned in me. Yes, yes, yes. 
Why we were still sinners. That is when God demonstrated his love. That is when Christ died for all. Do you know what that means to you? That his love did not depend. The love that he had for you, the love he demonstrated, did not depend on your response. That's what it means. God's love for us is not contingent upon our response, upon our reaction. He has just chosen to love. Do you know why? Because he's love. The devil will tell you, oh, look at you. Oh, because God loves me through this. Now, God does not love you again. Or now, God loves you less. No, don't listen to the devil. He doesn't understand the love of God. You need to teach him the love of God. Oh, Satan, you don't know. Christ's love is unconditional towards me. So, do you know what that means? It doesn't matter the situation that I am. It doesn't matter my blood and my mistake. His love remains the same. He's constant. Do you know why? Because it does not depend on me. It does not depend on what I do or what I fail to do. It's an unconditional love. And so this morning I wanted to understand that the love that Christ has towards you has no condition attached to it. Are you listening to me? It's an unconditional love. It's not based on anything. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? I wanted to know this. That Christ's love for you is what? An endless love. Let some say endless love. Endless love. Look at Jeremiah chapter 31. You need to see this scripture. Jeremiah chapter 31. So... Knowing the love of Christ means you know that Christ loves you infinitely. He loves you endlessly. He loves you everlastingly. Do you know what that means? His love is without any boundary. His love for you we never end. We never end. Jeremiah 31 verse 3. The Bible says, The Lord has appeared of all to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with what? An everlasting love. Let some say everlasting love. everlasting love. So what love does God, what kind of love does God ask towards you? An everlasting love. Everlasting love. That is the love that Christ has towards you. It is an everlasting love. It is a love that we never come to an end. So your sin will not terminate God's love for you. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Your blunder, your mistakes will never terminate God's love for you. There is nothing you will do that will cut short God's love for you. It's an everlasting love. Now look at John chapter 13. The book of John chapter 13. Look at verse 1. John 13 verse 1. The Bible said now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father. John 13 verse 1. Having love his own who were in the world, he loved them to what? Do we have that? So Jesus loved his own to what? Unto the end. Unto the end. He loved Simon Peter. That denied him three times. He loved him to what? To the very end. To the very end. So God's love for you. Now listen to me. It's not until you make your mistake. No. His love for you is everlasting. His love for you will never end. His love for you is infinite. So you need to know that God will love you to what? To the very end. To the very end of your life. God will love you. Throughout eternity, Christ is still going to love you. What a manner of love is that? Do you know what Hebrews 13 5? The Bible says he has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. Let's not say God will never leave me. God will never leave me. Nor forsake me. Are you sure? I say God will never leave me. Nor forsake me. I want you to see the book of Romans chapter 8. Still talking about the love of Christ. Nothing will ever separate you from the love of God. Romans chapter 8, 38, 39. The book of Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 38, 39. Now you need to see this scripture. Don't forget, knowing the love of Christ is learning. You have to learn to know. Are you listening to me? And that's what I'm teaching you. You need to learn it. You need to learn to know how much God loves you. And you learn from the word of God. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 38, 39. Paul speaking here. He said, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from what? The love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's so deep. That's so powerful. 
There is nothing that can come between you and the love of God. There is nothing. There is nothing. That's what he said. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Now listen to me. If you are in the deepest pit, and everyone has walked out of you, and everyone has forsaken you, and everyone has abandoned you, I want you to know that right there, God loves you. Yes. Oh, it was your fault. It was my mistake. I brought it upon myself. Now listen to me. God still loves you. Yes. Regardless of that. So you need to know that. That the love of Christ, you can't escape it. There is nothing that can separate you from the love that Christ has for you. Now listen to me. Now knowing that Christ loves you means that you know that you are completely acceptable to God in Christ Jesus. You need to know that you are accepted. Let some say, I am accepted. How many of you have gone to places where you are not really accepted? <laughs> that could be really, really embarrassing, all right? And then you go to bed and say, sorry, we didn't really want you here. Alright? Now I want you to know that in Christ Jesus, God always accepts you. Now, when you think, oh, look at me. I'm so unclean. I'm so filthy. Now look at, look at the terrible things I've done. Now listen to me. If you're in Christ, you are still accepted. Yes. Acceptable to God. Yes. Look at what the Bible says. Now that is the love of God that you need to understand. It's a love that will never, never reject you. Mm. It's a love that will never wait for you to clean up. He loves you while you are still unclean. Yeah. Unclean. Now look at what the Bible says. Ephesians chapter 1. The book of Ephesians 1. Look at 5 and 6. Ephesians chapter 1, 5 and 6. Having predestined us to adoption and so by Jesus Christ to himself. So God has adopted us into his family. According to the good pleasure of his will. That is what he chose to do. That's what God loves to do. Verse 6 now. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted. Let's not say, God, God has made me accepted. accepted. Now, it was God that chose it. He made us accepted in the beloved. Do you know the Greek meaning of the word accepted? It is the Greek word that is called karito. Now, listen to what karito means. It means to pursue with grace. So compass with favor. It means to honor with blessings. How many of you remember Luke chapter 1 verse 28? When the angel appeared to Mary. Now what did the angel give herself to Mary? Held thou at highly favor. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. He said thou at highly favor. Do you know that word highly favor is the same Greek word charisto that means accepted. So to be accepted means to be highly favored. Are you with me? Yeah. Now, so you need to know that you have been what? Highly favored by God. Yeah. When somebody rejects you, when somebody says you are not good enough for me, and then you weep, and then you become depressed, and then you become sad and discouraged, and you don't want to see anybody, do you know what is wrong with you? You don't know the love of Christ. You are highly accepted. You are highly favored. Now you need to know it. That is what it means to know the love of Christ. That every day of your life, as long as you receive Jesus, as the Lord and Savior, as long as you are in Christ, you are accepted to God. Are you with me? So don't let anybody condemn you. Don't let anybody put you down. You are highly favored. You are highly accepted. There is no time you are going to say, Father, and God will turn his back at you. No, he will never do that. There is no time you are going to say, Father, and then he will say, no, I can't hear you now. No, he accepts you, and he always inclines his ear to your prayer. So to know the love of Christ means to know that God accepts us. Because in Christ, he sees us only blameless and above reproach. As the Bible says, Colossians 1.22. Now listen to this. Knowing the love of Christ, now this is important. It is to know that in Christ Jesus, God does not record your sin against you. Look at what the Bible says. The book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I read 18 and 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You need to know this, that God does not keep the record of your sin. That is what the love of Christ is. God does not zero in, focus and major on your fault, on your mistakes, on your sin. Alright? That's the love of Christ. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19 that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not in Putin. Let's not say in Putin. There are trespasses to death. That word in Putin means not recording against. Alright? So the Bible is saying because God loves us he does not record our sin against us. That is the love of Christ. So God does not keep the record of our sin. So anytime you are rehearsing your sin before God, he's wondering what are you talking about. Do you know why? Because he keeps no record. He does not input it. He does not record it against you. Now that is the love of God. Now many of us don't understand that. And so when we stand before God, we feel guilty, we feel condemned. And you listen to what I'm talking about? Because we think, as we stand before God, what God is busy doing is checking the record of our sin. He does not keep that record. That is the love of God. That's what you need to learn to know. That God keeps no record of your sin. Now look at what the Bible says, Hebrews chapter 8. That's why knowing the love of Christ means you have to learn it. You have to learn to know what the scripture says about the love of God towards you. It is love. He has chosen not to keep the record of your sin. He has chosen not to deal with you as your sin deserve. Hebrews chapter 8. The book of Hebrews chapter 8. Quickly let me read verse 12. Now look at what God says he will do. Under the new covenant. God says, I will for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins. Now you need to lend it. You need to see. And their sins and their lawless deed, I will do what? Remember no more. That's what I'm saying. Remember no more. Remember no more. It's not that God has a short memory. <laughs> but he has chosen that I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Yeah. Yeah. And they are lawless with their sins, I will remember no more. Yeah. But you know, many of us, because we do not know the love of Christ, when we wake up in the morning, when we come to the place of prayer, you know what we do? We try to remind God all our sins, all our mistakes, all our shortcomings. We try to refresh his memory. But God is saying, what is wrong with you? I have chosen not to remember. Not to remember. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? It is only the devil that keeps record of your sin. It is only the devil that wants to use your mistake to condemn you. Yeah. But you need to know the love of God. That it is love for you. He does not remember your sin. He has chosen not to keep record of it. Yeah. That is why you need to learn the love of God. It's something you have to learn. Do you know what? So that you can always come before his presence. Yeah. So, because I know he gives no record of my listen to me, I walk to his presence with boldness all the time. Yes. That is why I say, come boldly, come boldly, yes. come boldly to the throne of prayer. Yes. Because I have no record of your sin. Yes. I have chosen to be merciful to you. Oh, yes. you, listen to, you, need, you don't need to beg God to be merciful. He said, I will be merciful. Yes. So what you need to do? Receive his mercy. Yes. You need to open up your heart to receive his mercy. You need to believe it. That when you stand before God, he keeps no record of your sin. When you stand before God, he does not see you as a sinner. He sees you as his child. Oh, Are you with me? He sees you as one loved by him. Oh yeah. As his beloved. That is what it means to know the love of Christ. To so know the love of Christ, now listen to this, it means to know that God loves you just as he loves Christ. Yeah. I want you to see this scripture, John chapter 17, the book of John 17, 22 and 23. John 17. I really wish you would learn to know the love of Christ this one. Learn to know that he loves you just as he loves Jesus. Yes. The beloved. The Bible says we are accepted in the beloved. The beloved referred to Jesus. Listen to me. You will have thought that well, God loves you, but he loves you lesser compared to Jesus. But that's not the love of God to us all. John 17, 22 and 23. Look at what Jesus said while he was praying for his disciples. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. Now, please look at verse 23 now. I in them and you in me, that they may be perfect in one, that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them 
As what? You have loved me. Let's all say, God loved me. God loved me. Just. Yes. As he loved Jesus. As he loved Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus said, I want them to know it. That God, you love me just as you love them. You love them just as you love me. Yes. And you know that word has. In Greek it means ketos. And you know what that word ketos means? It means in proportion as, in the degree. It means just as. The same way God the Father loves his son Christ. That is the same way he loves you. Yes. Whatever he will do for Jesus, that's what he will do for you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Whatever Christ has, that's what he gives to you. Do you know why? Because he loves you in the same proportion. That is why we are seated together with Christ at the right hand of the Father. Do you know why? Because he loves us just the same. That is the love of God you need to know. That God loves you just as he loves Christ, the man that never sinned. The perfect man, the only sinless man, that ever lived. Yes. The only righteous, perfect man that ever lived. Yes. The same way God loved him, who was without anything, the same way he loves you, in spite of your living mistakes. Oh, yes. Now, that is the love of God. Now, listen to this. That, that's why Paul said, you need to know the law that surpasses knowledge. knowledge. Your mind, your brain cannot understand that. <laughs> How will God love me that I'm always struggling with something? With Christ that is without sin, that is sinless, that is perfect. But that's what the scripture says. Yes. That is why it is something you need to know by your hearts. The mind cannot fathom it. The brain, it is too much for your brain to grasp, to understand. Mm. That's why the love of Christ is greater than knowledge. It surpasses mental knowledge. Yes. It is a revelation that you need to know that God loves you. Now listen to this. He loves you voluntarily. He loves you deliberately. He loves you unconditionally. He loves you infinitely. He loves you endlessly. Are you with me? That he has set you always in Christ Jesus. And then listen to this. He loves you just as he loves his son, Jesus Christ. Now listen to me. But why should I know the love of Christ? Why should we learn to know the love that Christ has for us. Why should I have that revelation? Do you know what it will do to you? Knowing the love of Christ will impart to you divine boldness, confidence, and courage, and yes. strength that you need in life. The reason why many Christians are weak is because we are not sure that God loves us as much as we want Him to love us. But I'm here to tell you that God's love for you is beyond what your mind can understand. What your mind can comprehend. He loves you much more than you could ever wish. He loves you without limit. Now listen to me. When you believe that, it will give you strength. It will give you courage. You'll be able to stand and say, if God is for me, and I know he's for me, nothing can be against him. As Paul said in Romans chapter 8 verse 31. Now listen to this. We read this scripture, Romans 8 32. He said, he who did not spare his son, but deliver him up for all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? If I know that God loved me so much, that he sent his son Jesus to die for me, do you know what? If I need healing, it will be hard for me to ask and to receive the healing. Why? Because I know that he loves me. And that is why he gave me Jesus. And if he get Jesus, there is nothing in comparison to Jesus. That he will not give freely. So knowing the love of Christ will give you strength. It will help you to approach God with boldness. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Now, if you know that God has set you always, if you know that God is always looking forward, looking forward to seeing you, looking forward to blessing you, you will walk to his presence with boldness. Yeah. Is that right? If you know that he does not deal with you as a sin desire, if you understand that he has said, I will be merciful to your righteousness, and that your Lord has deed and your iniquities, I will remember no more. If you know that God does not keep the record of your sin, and he does not hold your sin against you, you will walk boldly to his presence. You will receive healing that you want. The reason why many Christians are not enjoying the benefits of salvation. The benefits and the blessings of Christ. Do you know why? Because we do not ask with boldness. And the reason why we don't ask God for what we want with boldness because we are not sure of His love for us. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. 
Knowing the love of Christ will completely set you free from fear, from worries, from anxiety, from torment and love. I want you to see the book of 1 John chapter 4. Look at 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. 1 John 4 verse 18. Quickly, you need to see this. Knowing the love of Christ will set you free from fear. It will set you free from worries. It will set you free from anxieties. Are you an anxious person? You always worry. You are fearful. You need to learn the love that Christ has for you. First John 4, 18. Look at what the Bible says. There is no fear in love. But perfect love. Let's say perfect love. Perfect. What is perfect love? The love of Christ. Perfect love cast out fear. The only love that casts out fear is the love of Christ. So when you receive the love of Christ, when you come to learn that Christ loves you unconditionally, that Christ's love for you is constant all time, that Christ's love for you will never end, that Christ's love for you is infinite, the Bible says it will eliminate fear. It will eradicate fear. It will cast out fear from your heart because fear involves torment. But evil fear has not been made perfect in love. You want freedom from fear, freedom from torment, freedom from worry, from sleeplessness. What you need to do is to lay the love that Christ has for you. Yes. It will calm your nerves. Are you with me? It will calm your mind. It will calm your soul. Because you know, it is for you. Because when you sleep, you know, He watches over you. And the Lord that watches over you, neither sleep nor slumber. No evil will be for you. He will keep your children. He will keep your loved one. He will protect your interests. He will defend you. He will work all things together for you. How will I know that? I'm still be afraid. How will I know that I still be trouble? How will I know that I still think that something will go wrong with me? How will I know that I still think something will go wrong in my marriage? How will I know that I still think that something will go wrong in my relationship? It's because you are not grounded in the love of Christ. You do not know how much God cares about you. You do not know how much God is interested in your joy and happiness. That is why you are afraid. That is why even when things are working well, you are still afraid that something it's going to happen. Well, you don't know the love of Christ. And that's why knowing the love of Christ, you need to let it. Now listen to me, it's for you. And because it's for you, it will not allow anything that comes against you to prevail. We read it while we are praying. Because God is with me as a mighty one. All my persecutors, they shall stumble. They shall not prevail. They shall be utterly put to shame. You need to know that God loves you and he has said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So your enemy will not prevail. It doesn't matter what they show you in the dream. It doesn't matter the prophecy. It doesn't matter the negative vision. If you know that God loves you, now listen to me, you will not be afraid of your enemy. If you are afraid of your enemy, then something is wrong with your knowledge of God's law. You do not learn. You have not come to learn the love of Christ. Now listen to this. Now, the love of Christ, knowing the love of Christ, will also cause your whole being to be filled with the presence of God. Look at Ephesians 3, 19. We're ready before. Let's look at it again. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. Don't forget, knowing the love of Christ, you need to learn it. You need to understand what the scripture says. You need to check the scripture and have a revelation of what the Bible says about the love of Christ towards you. Now listen to this. Listen to this. He said, Ephesians 3 verse 19, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. I read it in Amplify. He said that you may really come to know practically, to experience for yourself, the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being, unto all the fullness of God, may have the richest measure of the divine presence, and become a body only filled and flooded with God himself. Now listen to me. When you give your life to Christ, Christ came to dwell in your heart. Alright? Now if you have been following my teaching, we teach free soul and body. Alright? That when you became born again, you became a new creation. You are chained in your heart. Your spirit is chained. And Christ comes to live in your spirit. Alright? So Christ dwells in our heart. But we have our soul. And our soul speaks of our will, our mind, and our emotion. And we have our body. Alright? But listen to this. The power of God dwells in your heart. The anointing of God is in your spirit. 
Your spirit is the innermost part of you. Are you with me? So everything that God gives to you, He puts it in your spirit. It's in your heart. And that is the deepest part of you. That is the innermost part of you. But when the devil tries to afflict you with sickness in your body, when the devil tries and fire an arrow of worries, now and fear and depression and discouragement in your mind. Now listen please, you need to draw the power of God, the anointing of God that is in your heart, that is in your spirit, that is in your belly, to your mind, and to your body. Is that right? Yeah. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But you know what we make it to flow is knowing the love. The love of Christ. Yes. Now Paul said here that when you know the love of Christ, it will cause your whole being to be filled with the fullness of God's presence. Yes. So if there's sickness in my body, and I want the healing power of God to flow to my body, now listen to this, if you focus on the love of Christ, now if you know that healing is freely available because Christ loves you. He God delivered his soul and he gave it to you. The Bible said, how shall he not with him? Really give you all things. Oh, so if I know that I don't need to impress God to get healing, and you listen to me, that healing is my battle, right? Because of Christ and what He has done, it will cause the healing power of God to flow. Yeah. That's why when I lay my hands on someone on the sea, on those who are demon possessed, now you wonder how do I know that God's anointing will flow? How do I know that God's power will flow? Do you know why? Because I know that God loves the person I pray for much more than I know oh, that person. Yes. Yes. So I know that the power will flow. I know that God will heal that person. That's why when I pray for you, I expect answer to prayer. Do you know why? Because I've come to learn to know that Christ loves you much more than I will ever love. Oh yes. So knowing the love of God will cause you to be filled with what? The fullness, the fullness of God. You want the fullness, presence of God in your mind and in your body, in your emotion. Then focus on the love that Christ has for you. Let's take two more things. Knowing the love of Christ, I'm talking about why it's so important for you to learn to know the love that Christ has for you. Now listen to this. Knowing the love of Christ will compel you. It will drive you to live for God. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. 2 Corinthians 5, 13, 14, 15. Let's look at those uh, three uh, verses. 2 Corinthians 5. Look at what Paul says here. For if we are beside ourselves, was writing to the church at Corinth, it is for God. If we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compel us. Let's have said the love of Christ. The love of Christ. Compel us. The word compel means constraints. It means to drag. It means somehow it just causes us to do things. <laughs> and Paul said, at times we, 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 we behave. We, we do things as though we don't have some mind again. We just, we, we love Christ crazily just like that. He said, do you know why? It is because the love of Christ compel us. The love of Christ compels us. Now, look at what he said. Because we taught God that if one died for all, then all die. And he died that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but who should they live for? For Christ, who died for them and rose again. Yes. Now, listen to this. When you see a selfish Christian, when you see a self-centered believer, who only think about himself, and you listen to me, whose life revolves around about himself, if this is someone that cannot make any sacrifice for God or for the things of God, are you with me? When you see someone that says, oh, this is too much to give to God. Now, that person is someone that does not know the love of Christ. When you know the love of Christ, it will drive you to live for God. It will drive you to serve God. It will compare you to make sacrifice for God. Now, listen to this. Knowing the love of Christ will make your faith active and productive. I wanted to look at Galatians chapter 5. The book of Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 6. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. The love of Christ, the knowledge of the love of Christ will boost your faith. It will make your faith active and productive. Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 6 now. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor circumcision avail anything. But what avail? Faith working through love. Let's have said faith. 
I can hear your voice. Let's say faith. Walks through love. Through love. So if your faith is not working, if your faith is not productive, if you are struggling with doubt and unbelief, do you know what you need? You need to know the love that Christ has for you. Yeah. The love of Christ will boost your faith. Yeah. The, knowing the love of Christ will make your faith active. It will make your faith productive. Yeah. If you want a faith that will deliver results unto you, the Bible says faith works through love. In other words, the reason why I know God will answer my prayer is not because I shout. Are you listening to me? It's not because I do everything perfect. It's not because I just finish paying my title offer. It's because I know He loves me. Yes. You know what? That is what will make your faith productive. It will strengthen your faith because you know God loves you and that is why He will answer your prayer. That is why we give you the miracle that you desire. That is why He will bless you. Are you listening? Up? Not because you give, <laughs> but because He loves you. He loves you. So when I know that God loves me, yeah. it will be difficult to repose faith in Him. Now listen to me. If I know that my sister loves me, are you listening to what I'm talking about? And then I, I, I'm broke, I need money. Do you know something? It won't be, I won't be reluctant to approach and say, do you know what? I need hundred dollars. Why do I have so much confidence that she will give it to me? It's because I have come to know, I have come to understand oh, that she loves me. Hallelujah. Yes. Listen, when many of us, when we pray, we doubt that God will answer. Because you do not know how much he loves you, oh, how much he cares for you. Are you listening? How much he wants you to be happy? How much he wants you to have joy? Then the reason why when we are sick and we pray, we are not sure of God will heal you because you do not know how much God loves you and wants you to be healthy. Amen. Hallelujah. When you know how much God loves you, it will be difficult trusting God. You will depose faith in Him and your faith will bring results. I want to close with this. Pastor, now I know why it's so important for me to know the love of God. How do I begin to learn? To know that Christ loves. How do I begin to practically experience in my daily life the love of God? Because that is actually the, my main concern, my main goal is to bring you to a point where on your daily basis, in your life practically, you begin to experience the love that Christ has for you. You understand? Not just knowing it in your head, in your brain, that Christ loves you, but it becomes an experience for you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That you can boldly stand and say, Christ love me and say, why can you tell us the past 24 hours? What are the things that have come to make you know? You say, okay, let me share with you how he has demonstrated his love to me in the past 24 hours. So what I'm talking about is not just to tell you that Christ loves you, but I want you to begin to learn how to practically experience the love that Christ has for you. So let's look at five things and then we pray very briefly. Alright, first, if you want to begin to experience practically for yourself the love that Christ has for you, the first thing you need to do is to believe it. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, I know people who have told you I love you before, they might have broken your heart, disappointed you, betrayed you, abandoned you, forsaken you. But listen to me, when Christ tells you I love you, believe it. That's where it starts from. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? You cannot begin to experience in your life Christ's love for you if you first don't believe it, that He loves you. Let someone say, God loves me. God loves me. I believe it. Are you sure? Say, I believe, I believe that Christ loves me. Christ loves me. So you need to believe that He loves you unconditionally, just as He said. You need to believe that He loves you in your worst day. Are you not that he loves you in your good day, but in your worst day. You need to know and believe that he loves you even in your deepest peace. Yes. You need to know that he loves you even when you are struggling with things that you brought upon yourself. Even when you have made a terrible blunder and you brought it upon yourself. And listen to me, his love for you does not change. You must believe it. Oh. If you don't believe it, you won't experience it. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to begin to experience God's love for you, don't let anybody talk you out of it. Don't listen to what the devil is saying. Don't listen to any strange part. Tell them, oh, I know I'm not doing things right. I know I have a lot of issues in my life. I know I have a lot of things to struggle with. But one thing I still know. Yeah. Christ loves me. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Now listen to me. That is where it starts from. 
You need to tell yourself that until you believe it. You understand? Now, nah, you know, if you need to say it a million times until you believe it, better do it. Because until you believe it, you cannot experience it. So I want to experience Christ's love. I need to believe that He loves me. Just as He said, He loved me deliberately. He loves me unconditionally. He loves me endlessly. He accepts me always. He loves me just as He loves His love. I am God's favorite. I am God's beloved. It doesn't matter who doesn't want to hear that, but I am God's favorite. You need to believe that. You need to believe that. And listen to this. Now, when you believe that, now listen to this. You need to receive it. You can believe something and not open up your heart to receive. Now, so you want to experience practically the love of God. Believe that He loves you the way He said He loves you. All right? Unconditionally, infinitely, deliberately, without limit. Now, and then you need to open up your heart to receive the love that Christ has for you. How many of you have tried to love someone and then you always meet a brick? You always meet a wall? You always meet a blockade? You understand? They don't open up so to, to accept the love that you have for them. There are many like that that wouldn't like Christ to love them. Oh, they say, oh, God, God, I want God to love me, but they're not holy at all. So let God love you. So you need to open up to do what? To receive the love that he has for you. Do you know how you receive that love? You need to receive freely the benefit and the blessing of the salvation that Christ made available to you. So if you are sin and you need forgiveness of sin, you receive it freely. God, thank you because you love me. I just, I just blow it. I just, I just, I just commit this blood out. But Lord, there is forgiveness with you. I receive forgiveness of my sin. You need healing, you need to receive it free. That is what it means to receive the Lord. Because everything that Christ has made available to us, He made it available as a gift of love. Yes. Hallelujah. This somebody says, you have to sow some seed, you have to give this thing to God, you have to pay this, you have to do that, and then you can receive your miracle. And then you can receive your healing. Now listen to me. That person will not make you experience the love of God practically. Now listen to me, because all the blessings of God are not for sale. God wants you to receive them. That means He gave it to you because He loves you. And just receive them freely, just like that. Hallelujah. You understand? You don't need to impress God. He chose to love you. He chose to make healing available to you. He chose to make forgiveness, salvation, miracle. Everything that you want is available as a salvation. Christ died to make them available. And He wants to just open up your heart and receive them. Receive them. Don't try to work for them. Don't try to perform to get them. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? That's how you begin to experience the love of Christ. Now, listen to this. When you want to perform, when you want to impress God, and say, okay, I want to do some things so that Christ can love me in return, you won't experience His love. His love is unconditional. There's no criteria. All they want is believe, open up your heart, and receive. That's how we begin to explain the love of God. Number three, now listen to this. I'm just showing you how you can begin to practically explain the love of Christ in your daily life. I said, first, believe that He loves you the way He said He loves you. Not the way you love people, alright? He loves you the way He said He loves. Unconditional. Practically, He loves you Without him, he loves you constantly. His love does not run to it. His love does not change. And you listen to what I'm talking about. So don't compare God's love for you with somebody else's love with your boyfriend. No, his love is infinitely greater than that. So when God says, I love you, don't say, well, that is how uh, Mr. Hill said he loves me. No, you don't understand. His love is the purest, is the greatest, is the highest, is the strongest. So believe he loves you the way he said he loves you. Open up your heart and receive whatever Christ is giving to you. Don't try to say, how much does it cost? I don't know. Receive it freely. Yeah. Number three, now listen to this. You need to start focusing on the love of God. You need to start meditating on the love of God. Now listen to this. The reason why many believers are not experiencing the love of Christ on daily basis is because we are not focusing on it. We are not meditating on the love of Christ. Whatever you focus on constantly becomes stronger in your life. Whatever you meditate on constantly begins to control your life. So focus on it. Sit down. Now listen to me. Deliberately make yourself to think about the love of Christ towards you. Think about the suffering of Christ for you. 
Think about his death. Think about all that he went through and he did it, not because we were good. Are you listening to me? When we were still sinners. <laughs> That's when he died. When we how much more know that you are sinning. That's all. I need to sit down and begin to deliberately. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Now, consciously begin to think and focus and meditate on the love of Christ. Yeah. When you begin to do that, you get a bigger revelation of the love of Christ. Yeah. When you begin to do that, it begins to affect your feelings as well. Yeah. Your emotions begin to line up with it. And you listen to what you just said like that thing that will have depressed you before will not depress you again. Why? Right? Uh-huh. Because your mind has focused, has meditated so much on the love that Christ has for you. Mm-hmm. And that love will impart strength, it will ingest strength and boldness to you. Yes. So you need to think about the love of Christ. Many of all we think, now listen to this, now our boyfriends and our friends and all that, we think about them all day. But what about Christ who loves you? What about God? Think about Him. When you are going back to a normal business, now listen to it, think about how He loves you. Think about what He went through. Think about His death on the cross for you. When you begin to consciously think about God and about His love for you and about Several ways in the past that he has shown to you that he loves you. Do you know what? His love in your heart, in your mind becomes stronger and stronger than ever before. But don't stop there. Now listen to this. Believe the love of God. Open up your heart to receive the love of God. Focus on that love. Meditate on that love. Something just happened. Are you listening to me? It's like a tragedy, like a calamity. Now listen to me. Don't think, oh, look at everybody has forsaken. No, there is someone that has said, I will never leave you, not forsake you. Think on that. That's what I try to do, all right? In the midst of my struggle and challenges, I focus on the fact that God is for me. Yeah. It doesn't matter who I against me, God is with me, He's for me. He will strengthen your heart. He will give you the courage and the encouragement that you need. Yeah. But you know something, don't stop there. Begin to confess it with your mouth. Yeah. Begin to say it. Say it yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, God loves you just the way you are. <laughs> You don't need to improve. Don't try to get better for God to love you. No. He loves you and He accepts you just as you are. Even in this terrible pain that you have. Even when that is struggling. When you have a lot of issues. God loves you. Now listen to me. You need to keep saying it to yourself. Keep saying it. Nothing controls your life as much as what you say with your mouth. So begin to say it. That is how to begin to experience the love of God. Because when you begin to say it, now listen to me, it becomes a conviction in your heart. You begin to, because you keep saying it over and over to yourself, now, even when you are sleeping, your mind will be blaming back to you. Yes. Christ loves you. Christ accepts you yes. unconditionally, infinitely, yes. voluntarily. Yes. He will never reject you. He loves you just as he loves Christ. Now listen to this, and lastly, this is important as we pray. Don't just believe that God loves you. Don't just receive his love. Now listen to me. Don't just focus on meditating on his love daily. Don't just confess and declare his love for you. Begin to act as someone that is loved by God. Many of us don't act as someone that is loved by God. You need to begin to act like that. I am God's favorite. I am God's beloved. If when someone is going to get it, and you listen to me, maybe there's a job, there's an opportunity. And they say, oh, we have 10 candidates. You tell them, it is for me. They say, what? Well, we have 10 candidates. You say, I am the spirit. Act like that. Oh, yeah. They say, but, oh, look at what is happening to everybody. They say, no, it won't happen to me. I am different. But they say, why are you different? I am the spirit. God's love me. Now listen to me. You need to begin to carry yourself like that. You need to begin to act like that. I want to close with this scripture. Let me keep it close with this scripture. Look at one of the disciples of Jesus that we call John the Beloved. How many of you know that Jesus loves all his disciples equally? Look at John chapter 13. But there is one that is called John. And that one just accepted the love of Christ personally. Above the rest of them. And do you know in all the scripture, about four or five times, when John referred to himself, he called himself the disciple whom Christ loved. <laughs> when you look at John 19, 26, John 21, John 21, verse 7, you see all that John called himself the disciple whom Christ loved. John chapter 13, because of time, let's limit it to John chapter 13. Look at it from verse 20. John chapter 13, look at it from verse 20. We we'll read this and then we we'll close. John chapter 13, I read from verse 20. Most surely, 
I say to you, Jesus talking here, he will receive whoever well blessed and receive me. He will receive me, receive him who sent me. When Jesus had said this thing, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Most surely I said to you, one of you will betray me. Jesus was about to be betrayed and then he told his disciples. He called all of them. Judas Iscariot was, was there. And of course, you know before that he has proclaimed his love to them. He loved them. He accepted them. Now, verse 22. Then the disciples looked at one another. They were perplexed by whom he spoke. Now, there was one, now listen to this, leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. How many of you know who wrote the, the epistle, uh, the, the Gospel of John? Who wrote the Gospel of John? John. John. How many of you know that? Do you know that in all other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, they didn't refer to John as the disciple whom Christ loved. But John, whenever John wants to introduce himself, he introduced himself to us as what? The disciple whom Christ loved. Do you know that Peter could have done the same thing? <laughs> James could have done the same thing. But he just accepted the love of Christ. And he began to ask just like that. Jesus looked at all of them and said, I love you guys. But do you know what? It was only John the beloved that acted as one that is loved by Christ. Look at what he did here. Now, so... When everybody was wondering, say, but Jesus, who is going to betray you? And they were all afraid. They were all confused. But there was this guy, John. He said, the Bible said, he leaned on Jesus' bosom. Now look at verse 24. Now Simon Peter, all of them had equal access, equal right to Jesus. But because they did not act as one well loved by Jesus, Simon Peter therefore motioned to him, that is, he called John, and asked to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Is that not very strange? All of them were disciples. And they wanted to ask Jesus something. They knew that that troubled the heart of Jesus. And they couldn't go straight to Jesus. They had to call John. I said, John, could you please ask Jesus? And look at what happened. Verse 25. Then, leaning back on Jesus' bread, that is John, he said to him, Lord, who is he? Then Jesus answered him and all that. Now, what am I trying to bring out here? That even though Jesus loved all his disciples the same. But listen to this. It was only John the Lord that acted as one that is truly loved by Jesus. So it is possible for you to know that God loves you and never acted that way. Now listen to this. I want you right from today to begin to act like that. Are you when you are alone, when you're in the midst of your friend, your colleague, don't act like them. Are you listening to me? No, act as one that is God's favorite. Amen. Ask as one that is loved by God. Be bold about it. Talk about it. That God loves me. Things will work together. When people say, well, 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 I don't know what is happening. This means you say, no, it's not going to happen to me. But say, but why do you say, oh, you don't know, I am God's favorite. Yeah. God will not allow it to happen to me. I am loved by God. I am God's beloved. This morning I want you to know that you are God's beloved. How many God's beloved do we have in the heart? How many of us begin to act as one loved by God? I want you to rise to your feet. It is time, it is time. God loves you. Christ loves you. It is time to begin to enjoy that love. It is time to begin to experience that love. It's begin to think as one loved by God. It is time to begin to act as one that loved by God. It is time for us to begin to respond to God's love. It is time for you to begin to tell others how much God loves you and how much God loves them. I want you to lift up your voice this way and say, God loves me. I want you to say with confidence, say, God loves me. He loves me unconditionally. He loves me completely. God loves me perfectly. God loves me totally. I want to say, Lord, I say, I believe in the love of God. This morning, I receive the love of God. I want to declare, say, I receive the love of God. I receive freely everything that Christ has offered me. Out of His love for me, I receive healing this morning. I receive my miracle this morning. I receive the thought of Jesus this morning. I receive answer to my prayer this morning. I receive wholeness in my life this morning because of the love of God. I want you to lift up your voice, say, Father, thank you because you love me. Help me, Father, to begin to respond in love. To begin that's one love by you. To begin to speak, that's one love by you. To carry myself, to conduct myself as 
That's one love like that. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Love much more than the words of mouth will teach. Father, I pray that all your children honor the sound of my voice. That by your spirit, Lord, they begin to have a revelation of your love for them. They begin to know that you love them much more than anyone could describe. But I'm asking, oh God, that every heart here be open to receive your love this morning. Are you here this morning? You are sick in your body. I want you to know that God loves you. And because He loves you, and we don't withhold healing from you. He's offering you healing today. Don't look at yourself. Don't focus on yourself. Focus on Him who loves you this morning. Is there any miracle that you want? Is there fear, worries, and anxiety? When you receive the love of God this morning, it will cast out fear. It will cast out worry and anxiety. And this morning, I want you to receive the love of God. Say, Lord, I receive your love this morning. I open up my heart to receive your love this morning. Lord, thank you for loving me. I believe. I believe you love me. I receive the love now. Oh, yes, Lord. I receive that love. Let the love of God heal your heart. Has your heart been broken before? Christ loves you and he can heal your heart. He came to heal the broken hearted. Let him heal you. When you receive his love, it will bring healing. It will bring all this to your mind. Has someone betrayed you, hurt you before? Receive the love of Christ this morning. The healing power of the Lord is here this morning. The presence of the Lord is in the house this morning. The glory of the Lord is in the house this morning. You can receive whatever you want from God this morning. In this atmosphere of love you can receive. Because He loves you. If God gave His Son, what else can He not give free? Whatever you want, God is giving you free with that. And I want you to receive. We hope you have been challenged encouraged and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org.uk Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call one 292 292 9270 or 1868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.